since lockdown, I've seen so many examples of how the safety net has failed my clients. Um, I could go on all day. You know, it's just highlighted that the most vulnerable people in the city and in society, you know, are just really up against it in, in, in all aspects. You know, having kids at home from school, um, the cost that's implicated with that, you know, lack of resources to educate them at home, um, you know, lack of computers, and just generally trying to manage. I'm part of the spring projects that work with refugees. They've come to, they've come somewhere to seek refuge and asylum, but they're feeling isolated and they're struggling. It's the people that have been made redundant, the stress that's been put on them and then me of almost having to tell them that they're not eligible. People are having large amounts of debt recovered from their universal credit. It can be up to 40% of their universal credit. That creates a massive great hole in the, in what we, in the safety net. And although the food banks try and fill it and do a marvellous job, it's, you know, they're needing food parcels. It, it's, it, every week appears to be an emergency. So it's delays in treatment, um, people not being offered palliative treatment, and their concerns, their worries, and I suppose they're not getting a chance to speak to people. We are getting a lot of new new people that obviously have never been in this situation before and they need help with stuff. Mental health support services in the community are, have took a massive hit. The um, universal credit system is particularly, it's very complicated and it's a whole new syllabus and experience that clients have to grasp really quickly. Um, and that's really difficult for them, especially when they're in isolation and they're not having the face-to-face -face, um, support. Everything's exacerbated and their support is sometimes seems to have just melted away and they don't really know when it will be back in place. The addition of a health crisis has um, had a huge impact, I think, on a lot of, of care workers. I've spoken to lots of... I've had days where I've only spoken to care workers. I spoke to a client who was, uh, who was dismissed because uh, she refused to go into somebody's home who exhibited all the symptoms of COVID-19 and the employer just said fine well if you don't go in and do this one then you're not getting any more shifts. Um, there's been a heightened quite a lot amount of um, scams. So there was a time when it was sort of like about £10 for sort of like sanitary um, hand wash and stuff like that um, to which you know, we, we trading standards, putting rules and stuff like that, and then we had to report them. Especially in the, the midst of lockdown, when people weren't going out at all, they just wanted somebody to talk to. Um, a lot of the older clients that were on their own, and they just wanted a bit of a chat. So really, for a lot of people, we are a bit of a lifeline for them.